hey friends what's up welcome or welcome back to the channel i have toast as always for breakfast getting right into it i'm actually really thirsty so hold on <laughs> let me grab some water here from my gigantic water bottle it's probably the funniest thing to see me drink from this water bottle because i have to use two hands to hold it it's so heavy and I always think about that whenever I'm having a meeting with someone and I need water. <laughs> the person watching me is probably like, whoa, that water bottle's huge. But um, anyway, I am going to tell you about breakfast. So I have some toast here. I have like a regular size toast and then a little baby toast. And I'm pretty much just trying to get through ingredients that I have in the fridge and the freezer that I don't want to go bad. And so exhibit A is the, the bread. My sourdough bread has been in the freezer for a really long time. It's taken up space. So I'm trying to finish it out. And that's why I have like little baby slices because that's what I'm coming up to on the, on the bread thing. And then I have just a little bit of blueberry jam that is kind of sitting in my fridge. And... I have told this story before, but I have seen jam get spoiled and it's a lot quicker than I thought it would be. So wanted to finish up the blueberry jam. It's almost done now that I'm using it. And so the base is vegan cream cheese. I use Kite Hill, the, the regular plain, and then just topped it off with that blueberry jam. I can't remember, I think it's Stone something is the brand of the blueberry jam, but as always, I link all of the products that I talk about in my videos in the description box. So yeah, just a simple breakfast here. Um, nothing fancy, <laughs> but oh, speaking of fancy, with this toast, I did actually make like a fancy, aesthetically pleasing looking toast for Instagram Reels and TikTok. I will put the link to it in the description box so you can check it out. But before it looked like this, before it had this all smushed around, I actually did like really aesthetically pleasing little blueberries where I just dolloped a bit of the blueberry jam into little circles and then i put tiny tiny little pieces of lettuce but don't let anyone know only only the youtube people will know that it's lettuce but i played it off like it was mint or something i feel like obviously mint would have been preferable but i didn't have mint so i use tiny little pieces of lettuce but yeah i came out looking up pretty cute was not my best work but if you do want to see how it came out it's on instagram and tiktok so uh let me stop talking and take a bite of this this is a classic topping for bagels for me whenever i was craving something on the sweeter side when it comes to my bagels i would get cream cheese and grape jelly i think it was grape jelly um and it's just such a nostalgic flavor okay y'all i have not been drinking my green drink that i typically have mostly because i finished it finally it took me so many months to finish it and i did not or i forgot to purchase another container of it so i'm gonna have coffee and i'm very excited about it not gonna lie <laughs> so what i've been trying to do is use this coffee blend that i got from gregory's coffee this is gregory's coffee brand uh, if you've never heard of Gregory's Coffee, it is sort of like a, a cafe or a coffee shop chain. Uh, not as large as Starbucks, but it's still got quite a few locations in the New York and New Jersey area. I'm not sure where else, but they have incredible vegan options, by the way. But anyway, I got <laughs> this coffee. I got this bag of coffee for free because of like a whole rewards program. And unfortunately, they overground it, so it's way, way, way too powdery. For my espresso machine which i did ask them to do an espresso ground but this is just way over that so every time i use this alone and i put it into my espresso machine the it's so packed with the espresso from the powder like uh texture that none of the water goes through and then i can't brew an at like an accurate uh, espresso so what i ended up doing and experimenting with was using a mix of my regular ground coffee that i usually use for my french press this one is the death wish coffee i do half and half of each into my like porta filter which is something that you add into your espresso machine to pull the espresso out 
sorry if this is boring, but I essentially just did half and half of these so that it's not too fine and the water could pass through and I can make my espresso, long story short. And it's been working. So thank goodness that I don't have to get rid of this bag of coffee because it's been overground. I can still use it, I can still enjoy it. It's just that I have to mix it with my death wish coffee. I have espresso right here. This is a double shot of espresso. And a lot of people ask me what my go-to coffee drink is because people know that I'm just like nuts for coffee. And typically speaking, uh, of course, when I'm not having drip coffee, when that's just super convenient at home, I always order a Cortado. So that's what I'm making right now. I'm making an iced version. So at the bottom here, I actually put a tiny drop of sugar-free vanilla syrup. I'm doing a vanilla ice cortado. And so I'm just going to put a little splash of milk. This is the almond milk. been using this for quite a while. Um, and if you're wondering what an iced, or if you're wondering what a cortado is, a cortado is basically like equal parts of espresso to milk. So if it's a double shot of espresso, which is like two ounces, I think, it's two ounces of milk. So it's a lot less milk than a latte, which is my preference. I like a strong coffee. And I'm doing it vanilla and iced style. I'm gonna put some ice into this now. Just a few cubes of ice. Gonna swirl that together to cool my, my mixture here. And then I'm gonna pour the espresso right over top. I am pretty sure that is how you're supposed to brew this. I learned that you're not supposed to brew espresso directly over the ice. You're supposed to put the milk down first. So that's what I did. And I put the vanilla syrup in at the bottom too, just so that it, it's easier to mix in the small but gorgeous cup. But there you go. It's an iced vanilla cortado. Super good. It has that nice flavor from the vanilla but it is nice and strong still, which is my preference when it comes to coffee. I don't like coffee that's too milky or too sweet, so it's the perfect balance. And if you are anything like me, you will love this so much, so give it a try. It's super easy. This took me less than five minutes to make. I made it really good today. And there's your coffee lesson for the day. Hey friends, I am sitting in the office having lunch today just because I, I'm uh, working through some stuff that I kind of dropped off because I had a lot of meetings today. So sitting in the office, having lunch, it's fine. But I have some takeout yet again for you. If you thought that it was going to be the end of the takeout from last week's video, you were wrong. I don't know why you would think that because 90% of my lunches whenever I do what I eat in a day videos are takeout. It's not, it's not takeout. Like I didn't just order this. It's leftovers of takeout from the weekend. So anyway, uh, I actually did a little bit of B-roll for lunch today just because I kind of liked how it looked in the plate. So you're probably seeing what I'm having for lunch right now on the screen. It is essentially vegan mac and cheese with vegan sausage and then some very interesting kind of vegan chicken cutlet on the side. So I ordered this from a local spot that I've mentioned many times before. I always link it in the description box, but their vegan mac and cheese at this spot isn't the best. So you're probably wondering why I would order it. And it's honestly because I was craving something like vegan mac and cheese, but also I got this new ingredient in the mail. It's called lactic acid, and I've been hearing about it so often in the vegan world where it's essentially, it, I wouldn't call it a spice, I wouldn't call it a seasoning, but it's sort of like a flavoring agent, and it gives cheesy like dishes that tang that makes things, you know, so irresistibly cheesy in non-vegan dishes. So this mac and cheese isn't the best. It doesn't always taste like cheese like it should. So let's try experimenting with the lactic acid. So I added a little bit of lactic acid to this. I never ate it so quickly before because it tasted so delicious. And I really think the lactic acid made it 10 times better. It gave it that craveable quality that you get from real cheese where there's a little bit of a tang. I don't know how else to explain it, but I just think of the word tang. I, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying, but like I said, there's vegan sausage and I'm a little bit confused about the vegan cutlet that's going on here. This was actually part of Ian's takeout over the weekend and he gave it to me because he didn't like it. <laughs> so I don't know what to expect with it, but 
he told me that this vegan cutlet is very soft in texture so it doesn't really replicate chicken well but he also said that it's extremely spiced and maybe too spiced so we're gonna test it out right now and see how it goes but first let me get a bite of this vegan mac and cheese it's not exactly ooey gooey it's like they make a sort of roux but their roux is super thick the sauce is a little on the gritty side I'm really not selling this dish, <laughs> but the textures are just not 100%, but it's still really good. It's still a flavor flavorful pasta dish, so I do like it. I don't know what they use for the vegan sausage, but it's not like beyond or impossible. But it's really good. It's super flavorful. Let's give this vegan cutlet, chicken cutlet a go. Right from the very start of this, I put my spoon right through the cutlet and it went through super easy like butter. So definitely doesn't have the texture of chicken. So the texture is very simply like mush. It's like mashed potato almost. But I see what he's saying. So I understand the texture is just completely off. But I see what he's saying when he says it's super flavorful. It has the flavors of chicken. Like a seasoned Italian style chicken. Which his dish was like an Italian pasta kind of kind of thing. So it definitely has those flavors spot on and it's actually really yummy when it comes to the flavor, but the texture is 100% not it. You know what? It actually almost has a texture of chickpea. Like if you were to blend chickpea, so maybe that's what this is. Maybe it's like a chickpea cutlet. And to be honest, although it's not the best when it comes to like a faux meat, I like it. That's my review. It's fine. This dish is fine. It's not the best dish I've ever had, but really good with a little bit of addition of the lactic acid. And if I just uh, pretend that this is a chickpea cutlet, not a chicken cutlet, all well with me. I'm having a snack. I don't know how I'm eating a vegan Baby Bell cheese when I just had mac and cheese, but... I don't have any other snacks at the moment, so uh, Baby Bell cheese it is. And I saw I saw reviews that this is not well loved, um, but I have to strongly, strongly stick to my review. This stuff is delicious. You've got to try it. Hey friends, I am back to tell you about dinner and I'm doing breakfast for dinner today. I've also done this on the channel before, but I haven't done this exact dish before. I'm basically gonna make breakfast quesadillas. So I got myself some larger tortillas. Uh, these are just the whole wheat mission tortillas. They're big enough so that they can be a nice sized uh, quesadilla. So the filling is basically going to be like a ham, egg, and cheese, or not really even ham, but I got this vegan bologna from Yves. I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but I'm just going to dice this up into small little cubes, squares, and I'm going to add them the quesadilla. The egg is going to be just egg, of course, and I think I'm going to add a little bit of red onion to the egg mixture along with like my standard seasonings that I use for uh, my egg scramble. Um, and I'm just using the red onion because I'm trying to get rid of it. And then the cheese that I'm going with are these cheddar shreds from Good Planet. You all know that Good Planet is my favorite brand of vegan cheese when it comes to cheese shreds and cheese slices. So I'm going to fill up the quesadillas with this. The bag is only like halfway full, so hopefully it's enough. But if not, I'll figure something out. I think I have other cheeses in the fridge. We'll see, but hopefully not. And then I'm just going to top these quesadillas off once I heat it up and the cheese is all melted through with some vegan sour cream. I have a little bit of tofuti sour cream left from wherever time ago and then I have a bunch of cilantro here so that'll be another topping uh, and I'll also probably add in some hot sauce and I think it's gonna be fun I think it's gonna be super delicious it's definitely something that's up Ian and I's alley this is definitely something that 
we know, we know is gonna be really good and we know we're, we're gonna enjoy it. So you're gonna see it on the screen right now. Hopefully it comes out really well. I'm hoping that this quesadilla does not stick into my pan because I've been having some issues with my pan lately. But that is all for this week's video. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for sticking around and I will talk to you in next week's video.